What is up players? It is Warboss Tay back up in this mug. Look at this, a tutorial. It's been a long time coming, but today we're going to start painting a Carcharodon. They are a chapter of Space Marines in the 40k universe, and uh, they are a lot of fun to paint. So uh, join us, won't you? This is the model I'm going to be using. We're going to be focusing on these Assault Terminators with Lightning Claws, because in the fluff, the Carcharodons have a special Terminator unit called the Red Brethren and um, they are really awesome. So uh, the paints you're gonna need are Mechanicus Standard Gray. I used a gray primer, very close to Mechanicus Standard Gray, but uh, the Mechanicus Standard Gray is also gonna be what you use to clean anything, any mistakes you make in this first stage. So uh, it's very important you have that with you. Also, we're gonna be using Eschen Gray. It's a little bit darker, and we're gonna be using that for our darker armor plates. Uh, which you can not really tell too much the difference between the two grays, but they're going to be really emphasized in the following videos. We've got Abaddon Black, we've got Lead Belcher for all of the silver bits. We have Retributor Armor, which is going to be our gold for uh, all of the gold details. We've got Rackard Flesh, which mainly at this point we're using for any purity seals you have on your marine. Celestra Gray is going to be our base color for the white bits, which are going to be the helmet, the fingers on his power fists. Uh, I already talked about Retributor Armor. And Non Oil is our shade. So this is what you're going to look, uh, your model should look like. I put mine on a decorative base. You don't have to. It could just be a regular model on a regular 40k base. And let's get started. So as we get started, the first thing that I did was spray undercoat my miniature. After I assembled him, it looks pretty much like I just built him up and I didn't do anything. And that's because I spray primed him with a Mechanicus Standard Gray-like primer. And a spray primer is just to cover the plastic, that hard shiny plastic, and to make the paint adhere to your model. And so if you've got a primer that is close to the overall color of whatever model, or whatever your model is going to look like at the end, it's always a bonus. So for example, if I'm painting a Blood Angel, they are predominantly red, maybe I want to have like a red primer. Or if I was painting an Ultramarine that are predominantly blue, I wouldn't use a gray primer or a red primer. Heaven forbid I'd use a blue primer. So the first thing I'm doing is I'm taking my Abaddon Black and I'm painting the black details, which are going to be the wiring that attach the power fist, uh, the claws, I guess, to the, the housing, as well as the cable, uh, cabling cover tube thing here that goes from the back of the arm to the power fist. If you are using a Terminator or uh, if you're just painting a Carcharodon Space Marine that does not have these power fists, then uh, I don't think you would have these these are details specific to power fist armored terminators uh the the main thing i want to emphasize is that i'm going to be teaching you how to paint these individual details but i, I want you to, to feel free to experiment on uh, using these same details and, or these same techniques to paint your model your individual model this model is not holding a bolt gun or any kind of gun but uh, in order to kind of carry over the color scheme, which is a lot of grays and blacks, I would look for something that I could paint black detailing onto if this was a regular Space Marine. Um, some things that are going to be, I guess, uh, identical to any Marine is that all, all Space Marines, Terminators, regular Marines, special characters, if they're wearing the Space Marine armor, any version of Space Marine armor, they're going to have these um, joint bits. And I, I think in the canon they're like rubberized, but they're flexible. They're meant to allow movement and not be completely hard ceramite plates, right? So you're going to find them in the joints between the hip and the upper leg armor. You're going to find them in the back of the knees or in the elbows or in the, um, uh, any kind of place where the, the two armor plates meet. And so for, for our model here, for the Carcharodons, I'm going to be painting them black. My overall concept of painting the Space Marines is that they are um, predominantly gray 
they build up to white and they uh, have depth and shades that deepen down to black. When you're painting any kind of space marine, the biggest question is how do you make your models uh, stand out? How do you give your models little bits of detail, individual colors? And uh, so what I'm trying to do is because I'm working with a predominantly gray color scheme, I'm, I'm looking for areas where I can paint the model white. And to help me, I'm using the uh, Imperial Armor books for the Badab War. And they have the color plates, some great background fluff and history, and uh, some background fiction on the Carcharodons. The Carcharodons were a Space Marine chapter that became infamous during the Badab War. And uh, they remain loyal. They're good Space Marines. They're the good guys. But uh, they are very enigmatic, and they're very uh, strange, and they're very brutal. Their tactics are very, very savage. And uh, I'm sorry, I was using Ceramite White or not, sir, I'm sorry, Celestra Gray to paint the helmet. So that's going to be a nice bright gray, almost like a dark white. <laughs> and uh, I'm painting Lead Belcher now. And uh, just to give you some idea, the, the helmet is going to be white and the fingers are going to be white. So we're starting with the Celestra Gray. It's a nice bright gray, like I said. And um, we're going to let that dry. The Lead Belcher... I, I don't want too much silver on these models because the silver is reflective, it's shiny, it's metallic. I want a lot of the uh, the artistry to come out in the various shades and highlights of the gray that we're going to do. Carcharodon basically means, I think, like shark. So Carcharodon Astra is the technical name of the Carcharodon Space Marines, but literally translated means like space shark. And that's funny because when... Space Marines were first introduced in Rogue Trader in the 80s. The Space Sharks were a chapter of Space Marines. And um, I think their original color scheme was really, really cartoony. And uh, I, I'm sure if you Google Space Sharks 40K, you'll see their original color scheme and uh, their, <laughs> their, their original icon or their chapter insignia was like a shark maw, like a shark swimming straight at the camera. And its mouth is like wide open and it just looks really cartoony. It's a good thing they kind of switched that to their, their current insignia is a white shark on a dark gray background. So with my lead belcher, what I'm doing is I'm painting the, uh, the metal, I don't know, would you call them like rivets or uh, I guess the pistons that you see on the sides of the legs and the sides of the arms. So there's two on the either side of the leg armor and there's two on either side of the uh, right by the elbow guards there because we're painting lightning clawed terminators i'm also going to be painting the lightning claws in silver now uh, sometimes what i like to do is a kind of crystal effect which you might have seen on my eldar their mirror weapons and uh, i've done that also with i think the I, I painted some iron hands for commission in the past and I like that bright blue with the lightning crackling down the center. For the Carcharodons, I want them to look much more savage, much more bloodthirsty and brutal and gritty and down, down and dirty. So uh, I'm, I'm going to go with the straight silver, which is what the lead belcher is. Now, when you're painting lightning claws, it's really easy to forget that the uh, there are flat surfaces on, in the center in the middle of the claws, like you don't want to miss the second and the third and the fourth claw. You want to cover all three sides, which is the uh, top part, kind of where the knuckles are going down, and then um, the front side, of course, that are uh, most easily seen from overhead, and then the underside. You want to be able to turn your, turn your model upside down and paint the uh, underside, because one of my, one of my, um, I guess rules as a painter is no matter which angle you turn my models at, there is going to be paint. It's not going to be, you know, left unpainted or looking really messy underneath. So I, I think that's something I pride myself on. And I think you should too. As artists, we want to have our, uh, our figures look as, as awesome as they can be. So like I said, we're doing Celestra Gray for the fingers. And again, we're following that rule of turning the model uh, at different angles so that we can paint all of the fingers in um, in this celestial gray. 
Now, um, I'm going to be making a lot of mistakes. It's been a while since I painted for a film live like this, I guess, in real time, rather. And uh, so I'm going to be making a lot of mistakes. And that's what my Mechanicus Standard Gray is for. Never be discouraged. If you are a messy painter, if you're you know, if your eyes are acting up, if first of all, if you're painting, you want to make sure you have enough light. I just bought this new LED light. It's terrific. I've got uh, this bright blue light shining in the front, and then I've got a more yellowish light shining behind. And uh, so I am trying to get rid of as much of the shadows as I can. And um, shadows are great when you're trying to see where naturally the light is going to fall on your model so that you can enhance those, but uh, not when you're actually painting. You don't want a lot of shadows while you're actually painting your models. Here we are with the Eschen Gray. Um, this is going to be one of those times when the Eschen Gray is a little bit thick on my brush. I, I didn't thin it down as much as I would have liked to. And so it's going to be a little splotchy on the leg guard here. And again, if, if you wonder like, well, well, how is he deciding which parts to paint in this darker gray and which parts to leave Mechanicus standard gray? Um, I'm using most of the Imperial armor uh, pictures, the color palettes there. If, if you Google uh, Space Sharks 40K, Space Marines, Carcharodons, anything like that, you might be led to um, the, the 40K wiki page or the Lexicanum page, which also has I think a lot of the the art lifted from it in the in the gallery, and uh, really I'm just taking that as the you know kind of as gospel for how I'm going to be painting my um, my carcharodons, and a lot of them have the the lower leg armor in this darker gray. Almost all of them are going to have dark gray shoulder pads, the center of the shoulder pads. If you're painting a regular Space Marine. The shoulder pads are going to be dark gray in the center, and I think the the edges, the rims, are going to be um, like gold. I think just for a little bit of a little bit of uh, variation and uh, some nice pop of of gold metallic color. I don't know if I mentioned this, but I also painted the Crux Terminatus there, and uh, Celestial Gray. And that's going to be um, so so that I can paint that up to a nice bright white as well. My my style. I'm not sure if you are a newcomer to my channel and and my videos, but <laughs> you'll notice that my style is I like to do everything in threes. I like to have three uh, groupings of three on uh, on my mo most of my models. So for the white, I I've got the white helmet. I've got the white fingers. I've got the crux terminatus. I like to have as much as possible kind of grouped in threes like if I went with white knee pads or white boots that would kind of throw me off my artistic sense would kind of be a little bit shaken in that sense because white is such a is a, such a noticeable spot color right it, we're going on to the retributor armor which is the gold details and uh, there's a lot of gold on these models a lot of details on these models are going to be painted in gold for example the um insignia right here on the chest, the chest piece. The I, th I think it's a winged, is this a skull? I think it's a winged skull. No matter what the insignia on the center of the chest piece is, gold is a great way to make it pop, especially because gray is a duller or more, more drab color. That gold there is going to really pop right, right in the center of the model. What I also like to do is paint gold detailing. And, you know, this is me as a modeler. I didn't have to glue the scroll casings hanging off uh, the front of his waist. I didn't have to glue that skull and crossbones crotch guard uh, armor plate right here in front of him. I didn't have to glue the uh, little insignia there hanging off of his shoulder pad. And I didn't have to glue on a shield, or I could have uh, shaven down the shield on his left shoulder pad. The the fact is that I when I was reading about the Carcharodons, they are a chapter that prides itself on its extremely devout loyalty to the Emperor, to the Imperium, to uh, mankind. And even though in battle they are savage and bloodthirsty, and um, I've seen it compared, I've seen them compared in the fiction to the uh, the Night Lords in their kind of terror tactics and their how bloodthirsty. They are. I've seen them compared to the uh, the world eaters, 
because they like to get in there and um, close with the enemy and chop them up with their chain fists and chain axes. And also the Carcharodons are, in the fiction, one of the chapters that actually enjoys using chain axes over chain swords. Most space marines use chain swords. And when I was looking at, uh, when I was doing my research on these guys, I read that they actually prefer chain axes. And uh, chain axes are just, they seem so much more uh, just really bloodthirsty and um, more more just brutal hacking at an enemy with an axe uh, rather than, you know, the artistry of using a sword or the skill, a little bit more of a, a swordsman or fencing style rather than just wading in and, and chopping and hacking like a madman. So the Carcharodons in the fluff are very very savage and uh, they've also been compared to the raven guard because their skin of the actual marines inside the armor is very pale white almost and a uh, grayish white very pallid and like a corpse they also like a shark have eyes that are almost completely black and um this so th that kind of makes them seem a lot like the uh the raven guard and the night lords so there's a lot of uh, speculation because these guys appeared in the Badab War, but there's no real records of them in the fiction that says that they were descended from, uh, you know, one of their, their their parent chapter was, like, nobody knows. So uh, those records are, are hidden and sealed, and so there's a lot of speculation. Are these guys descended from the Raven Guard? Are they descended from one of the traitor chapters, the Night Lords or the World Eaters? Um, were they... Did they get, uh, I guess, cut off from their their parent chapter, and they've kind of had to develop on their own? It's a uh, very interesting storytelling wise because they act like crazy, crazy bloodthirsty uh, serial killers in combat, just mass murderers. But um, they are also loyal to the Imperium. They um, come to the aid of the uh their comrades and um the funny thing about them in the fiction is they don't communicate with other imperial forces so in the badab war they just kind of showed up and uh, nobody was really like oh carcaridons please help us they were <laughs> they kind of appeared with the rest of the loyal chapters that came in to save the system and whenever there is a briefing or uh or a meeting of military commanders they would they would be there but they wouldn't ever coordinate with the other forces they were like we're gonna do our own thing they they would purposely cut everybody out of their radio network so they could talk to each other but um they would never communicate with the other imperial forces i think that's hilarious they're just doing their own thing um they seem like they're right on their on the cusp of being you know falling to the dark side but they're they're still extremely loyal they like to um show their loyalty on their armor i think i read that they they like the uh, to display their 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 loyalty and um, their their deeds, and uh, the great thing about them also is that they have a lot of, I guess, um, they're they're reminiscent. Their their armor markings and their insignias and their their um, I guess the kind of decorative decorative like markings on their armor is very inspired by like Polynesian tattoo art which is terrific because as a Pacific Islander, I think it's really fun to paint this kind of fake Polynesian style tattoos on, on these space Marines. You don't want to do too much and you don't want to make it like an actual authentic, like Polynesian tattoos, but like you can really do some interesting things and no other chapter has that. Um, so I, I, I think that's really fun. Some of the things that I was doing while I was yabbering on there was I painted all of the gold details, anything that's etched on the armor or any uh, detail that's popping up off of the armor I painted in gold. I also put some silver on, you can see on the helmet, the uh, rivets on the side, as well as the little piping in the front. I painted silver in lead belcher. I did some Abaddon black for the uh, two tubes that connect the leg armor to the uh, foot armor leg armors connected to the okay and then i did black eye lenses carcaridons are very very odd in that they've got black eye lenses their eyes are black 
Um, but it makes them look very soulless, very inhuman, and I think it's terrific. Most space marines, even the evil ones, have like red eye lenses, or if they're um, like the world eaters, they have like green or blue eye lenses. So the fact that these um, just, you know, psychotic, murderous good guys have black soulless eye lenses, I think is terrific. The final step here is to cover our model in non oil. You're going to see a little jump cut right now because I wanted to wait until everything was uh, a little bit more dry. So I came back a couple, maybe like half an hour, an hour later. I let the Rackarth flesh of the parchment dry, the, the gold detailing. And um, still when I was painting on this non oil, I think some of the gold was still a little bit wet. I saw a little bit of those uh, gold flakes on kind of spreading out. So you want to make sure that you give your paint some time to dry, especially before you go in with a wash like this non oil. It's very uh, important that you do not start painting over a wet coat of paint. Um, but that's it. I'm just going to show you that I'm painting the non oil. We want to make sure that the uh, wash does not pool on any of the large flat areas. We want to make sure that uh, it doesn't kind of drag to the towards the bottom and then gather in puddles. We want to make sure that it spreads out as much as possible because once it dries, those shiny oily puddles of wash are going to be really hard to get rid of. On the other hand, we don't want to leave anything unpainted. We want to make sure we get in all the joints and all the creases and crevices and we get that nice, beautiful, dark shade in there. So uh, known oil is my my preferred shade for something that's going to be like a little bit darker, a little bit more battle worn than uh, a bright shining space marine. If I was painting something like the uh, Adeptus Custodes or uh, Blood Angels or especially like a White Scars space marine, something with a very bright armor color scheme, I would probably go with something different. But for our purposes here, these Carcharodons, they love that dark shade. So hey, thanks for watching everybody. Thank you for supporting my channel. If you're new, if you're a new subscriber, thank you for um, checking it out. And if you are uh, an old timer who's been with me over the years, uh, a veteran of the long painting session, then uh, thank you for for checking it out. I, I really appreciate it. Like I said, this is a, a return to form for me. I'm going to be trying to do more tutorials and um, I'm, I'm really excited. So I'm going to be posting links to this on my Facebook, on my Twitter, of course, and um, I'm going to be posting the link into the Google group. If you are not in my Google group, please come on down, post pictures of your work, let everybody know what you're up to. It's a new year, so uh, it's you can find that at Warboss Taste 2017 painting community. We've got a, a lot of great contributors there and just uh, hobbyists all over the world. So, hey, I appreciate everything you guys uh, do and um, all the work you put in. Keep painting. It's the best time to be painting is right now. I hope you're painting while you watch these videos. I hope it's playing in the background and you're getting some work done because uh, the more work we get done, the more painted models we put on the field, the better for everybody. So thanks again for watching. You can um, support me on Patreon if you uh, feel so inclined. But um, I would love it if you support me by just hitting that subscribe button hitting the thumbs up, and uh, leaving a comment down below. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in part two, in uh, which case we will build up the highlights, and uh, we'll do a little bit of fun Polynesian tattoo artwork on some of these armor plates. There's our Carcaridon Space Marine, and uh, again, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.